Hello everyone, for the past week I've been playing an indie TTRPG called Shogunners and I finished my playthrough after collecting all the achievements and experiencing all the content that the game has to offer I clocked in my playthrough at 23 hours It's a small game, but the price is fair, I have to say the package here is a banger and fans of turn-based RPGs should definitely keep this one on their radar Let's go over the different sections and I'll tell you precisely why you should buy this game Story. I've seen lots of reviewers saying this is the weakest section of Shogunners, but I have to say I actually liked it. I don't think the settings they created here has ever been tested on a TTRPG before and it, it works super well. Reminds me a bit of the younger games, in the sense that your main character and other challengers are on a TV show where contestants go through different levels and challenges, facing off against death row inmates and each other to win a big prize pool, or in the case of our main character, another hidden motive to win is in the cards. All the characters are likeable, and they offer reasons for them to be in the show competing to the death. Take for example Tybalt, he is in the game since he was played by other dirty cops in his department, and he was an inside informant, which means he wouldn't last long in prison, so he joins the show where he has a chance of coming out alive at least. You have Martin as a returning champion, for example, and the main villains, um, the creator of the show, Mr. Ford, along with the deadlier death row inmate ever, Ulysses Derrick, responsible for killing several challengers and contestants in the game in past seasons. The story is very interesting, the different levels and some twists keep the story engaging and unpredictable in some areas, and uh, was very welcome and a nice surprise in what I thought would be a very generic and predictable plotline. Progression systems and exploration Shogunners is very simple in its progression system, but at the same time, it also tries to innovate a bit, and I appreciate the effort. So as you play more and more, you'll gain new companions, which will only join your party after a certain level, or, or a certain story event is concluded, and you then have your usual level up screen where you can use skill points to get new abilities for you and your companions, or simply increase your movement range, your melee damage. The skill trees aren't very extensive, but they do its job considering the game's length. In order to level up, you'll need XP. You get XP by clearing ambushes on the maps, by joining and beating optional combat arenas, by providing autographs to NPCs in the levels, and by, of course, beating the main combat events in the game. Autographs is a key point, as the more autographs you provide, the more your fame will rise. More fame means you can take sponsor deals. Sponsor deals will give you and your party unique bonuses, like receiving more XP, getting a free reload, for example, so you need to pay attention to these when you are roaming around. Fame can also be increased in the same way XP can be increased. As you know, doing optional combat arenas, doing um, ambushes, so on and so forth. Selling unused weapons will also uh, grant you fame. Additionally, whilst roaming around levels, you will occasionally find puzzles and loot boxes where you can get money and new weapons, ships and utilities such as grenades, medkits and shields. You'll want to stack your money in order to buy some pretty OP weapons that the market has, so never turn down optional combat arenas and keep an eye out for those loot boxes in the levels. Ships like level ups and sponsoring deals will increase some sort of stat like melee damage, movement rage, HP regen, so they are handy if you want to really min-max your uh, party damage and, and utility. As a whole, the, the progression systems designed here, as I said before, are very simple, but also very rewarding. Sometimes complex isn't the way to go. Exploration-wise, I do have to nitpick. The levels all sort of look like the same, there isn't enough variety. And although some puzzles are interesting, I didn't have many incentives to really explore were it not for loot boxes, autographs and the optional combat arenas. Overall, I found the levels to be lackluster and could have used more variety overall. The ending levels are great though, and very very different from what you see during the, the whole game. And it was a joy to play them actually, but they are the ending levels and it's just one or two. But they are very, very different. The, the environment, the, uh, the design is very, very different. Aside from that, I need to briefly mention traps and that sort of fits in with the puzzles. I actually like their usage and the creativity behind them. They aren't too annoying to the point of leaving you frustrated nor too easy to solve. Trap disarming is engaging and not overly simplistic or overly complex. Then we have combat. I think this is the game's strongest asset, and for good reason. The death animations, the smooth transitions, and the fun aspect all come together to form a nice, tight pa package here. 
It's very much what you would normally see in a TTRPG, reminds me of Wasteland 3. You have your normal shoot ability with the unrealistic XCOM probability to hit percentages, your melee attack, two action points, and then the more customizable abilities per character that give characters their own uniqueness. One nitpick here is really the difficulty, even on the hardest setting the game is ridiculously easy and I don't think I ever saw the game over screen. There are some really overpowered abilities, especially on the main character, where you can just chain multiple melee kills in a row and you can clean an entire combat encounter like that. The cartoony look of the game and, and characters also give it an original spin and, and in, it's in an endearing look that makes it more satisfying to play. Overall, mm, very smooth, animations are on point, just difficulty could have been a bit better. Final thoughts and score, Shogunus is a very good indie TTRPG. It doesn't specialize on anything and most of its systems have been done and redone in multiple other games, but its unique story and setting along with the smooth combat and fantastic dead animations make it an indie worth playing. At its current price point, I do think it's a steal and you should support these devs, I would of course recommend it right now. That's a wrap, this is a shorter review, it's it's also a, a very short game and I mean it's it's very to the point in what you can say about it in terms of its system. So it's not it doesn't have any unique mechanic where you need to and unique progression systems, a lot of complex and overwhelming systems, so it doesn't really have much to say here. It's just very, very typical, very traditional TTRPG, but it just plays good and, and it's a very welcome addition. I, I especially like the story. That was the highlight for me, um, and then that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this small review on an underrated indie that may have gone unnoticed by the gamer masses. Expect some Diablo 4 content in the channel soon and reviews for My Asma Chronicles, Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun and Persona 5 Strikers. Have a good one guys, and I hope you are looking forward to Diablo 4 as I am. See you on the next one.